The Exorcist. That's right, we're going to be talking about this horror classic today. In fact, not just today, but tomorrow as well. This is a two-part video, so basically this is a film that I hadn't actually properly watched before. I think in the past I'll have kind of had it on in the background or something, which is kind of stupid really because I love horror movies and this is one that is regarded as one of the best and scariest um, I don't know how true that is, I mean it's all subjective, but um, I need to form my own opinion, so in this first video, in this first part, my co-reviewer John, who's been on the channel before, he's going to tell me about the movie, he's going to tell me a lot of the, the backstory to it and so on, and then in part two, I will have watched the film by then, and then we can have a mutual conversation, having both watched it and share our opinions, so that's what we're going to do with this two-part video. This is our 11th annual Brand X Reviews Halloween special, the 10th anniversary of the channel. What better way to celebrate than by talking about this horror classic, The Exorcist. sort of remember it but I think at the time I wasn't a huge fan I kind of maybe a bit over over hyped or whatever in my head but I want to rewatch it and I want to make my mind up about it because it should be a good film so you on the other hand have seen the film many times and the sequels for better or for worse so you're going to educate me here today in this video then I'm going to go away and we're going to do a follow-up video after I've watched it and we can have more of a conversation so yeah, what's uh, what are you thinking? So, oh, The Exorcist, where do we start with that? The Exorcist, there are, <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, there's three versions of the film. There is the 1973 version that was released at the cinema. There is the much maligned CBS TV movie from 1980, which I wouldn't recommend I just wouldn't I just wouldn't go anywhere near that and then you've got the one that is uh, best known as the version you've never seen or what we'd know as the director's extended cut so there's some key differences in this so to begin with the exorcist is a story at its base level it's a theological story of good versus evil that's the uh, basis of it you start off and the, the key characters in this are you've got a character called Damien Carris, you've got Chris O'Neill, Reagan O'Neill, and you've got Father Merrin. I think that's how you say his name, Merrick or Merrin. So Merrin, when you meet him to begin with, it's on an archaeological dig in Iraq, and it's played by he's played by Max von Sydow. Now, Max von Sydow, he's clearly an old man in this, except when the Exodus came out, I think he was 43 when it was being made. So he's one of those actors who you really didn't need to age because he's always looked a lot older than what he was. So it's on yeah. an archaeological dig. Uh, they're digging into it. And for me, it can be a very confusing scene. A uh, bit of an exposition can this. But the ultimate case, ultimate part of this is you see him confronting this demon statue who you later realise is this demon called Pazazu in statue form and the Iraq scene ends where you've got Merrin and Pazazu statue staring at each other. Fast forward to, uh, I want to say Georgia town or Georgetown, uh, 1973. And this is where you start to meet the key players you start with seeing Chris O'Neill you then meet in the housekeepers then you meet Reagan then you meet her nanny at some point this is it might be a little bit out of sync here then you meet Father Karras uh, and you meet Father Dyer now the key difference between the films and this so I'm going I'm sorry I'm jumping about a bit here so the film Reagan the girl she gets possessed they go down the psychiatric route. The psychiatric route gets ruled out. And as Chris O'Neill says, you're, going to, you're suggesting I send my daughter to a witch doctor, meaning priest, and an exorcism. And from that moment on, the exorcism comes in. I've really, really sort of gone really short there because you haven't seen it. So I don't want to go too much into too detail because I don't want to spoil plot parts for you. 
but there are a couple of key differences. Which would you want to see, the theatrical version or the version you've never seen? Right, one of the strangest things that's in the version that's never seen is there is this scene that was almost mythical in nature called Spider Walk, where you see Reagan, mid-possession, walking down the stairs, almost like a spider, you know, on a back walking. Yeah, I think I sort of remember that. It's been kind of copied in other films as well, I think, as well yes, over time. Yes, it has. But it is bizarre because it's clearly been added in. It's clearly they didn't... Uh, when when you see it, it just looks completely... It takes you out of the moment because it's just been added there, I think, because it would have been in there if it had been allowed at the time. But the effects are not anywhere where they need to be, but it does make for a good inclusion. The second part is this, when the exorcism's going on, in the original, outside the room, you've got Father Merrin, you've got Father Karras, they're sat saying nothing. On the version that you never see, they get into a debate about possession, and Blatty was unhappy at the time, I believe Blatty directed it, and William Friedkin took the scene out, which was Karras and Merrin, talking from a theological and spiritual possessed per theological and spiritual perspective and i think that goes to the core of the film so for me that scene alone adds a great deal of context now there's another scene in this which was also cut from the original uh theatrical but is in the version you never see you've got two characters you've got father dyer detective kinderman they bond of their love of movies. The reason I feel that's important is you fast forward to Exorcist 3. In the original film, uh, Lee Cobb, I think it was, played Kinderman, and you had Father Dyer was O'Malley, I think it was William O'Malley, and I believe he was an actual priest. So they were the two characters. Fast forward to Exorcist 3, you've got George C. Scott playing Kinderman, and you and I cannot remember the actor's name who plays Dyer, but there's a beat, there's a there's kind of a scene about midway through the first act where they go to see a film at the cinema. So to me, it plays hand in hand to Exorcist Three. So if you were planning on watching the Exorcist movies, that would make uh, there would be a nice synergy there for you to sort of see. Well, they bonded over a lot of films in the first movie. Now they're going to see a film in. Exorcist 3, so that works well. And then there is a scene at the very end, which I don't want to go too much into, but it involves Father Dyer being handed something by Chris O'Neill. In the original, the the car drives off at the end. In the film, in the, uh, sorry, in the version we never see, Father Dyer passes it back to Chris and she says, I suppose I will keep it. That's just, I don't want to say too much there, but you'll understand why that would be such a pivotal moment. And it changes, right. it actually changes. That one thing for me changes the whole film. Mm. Because remember, she's referring to, bear in mind that she refers to religion as witch doctors. It is quite a, it's quite an important moment, and I suppose it shows... There's an acceptance, good over evil in both. Which, however, the film ends, I take it that good trumps over evil, but evil will always evil will always take some good out of the way in its uh, in its process. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, the differences between the two films. Personally speaking. I'd watch both, but that's just me. I watch both because I like to see what was seen. We've had this conversation about likes Terminator 2 before. I'd happily watch Terminator 2, the theatrical cut, and the Terminator 2 film that we know because I I like to see, well, what was released at the time? What did people see? And what were we supposed to see? So if you want to see what was released at the time, you'll go for Exorcist 1973. If you want to see the film as it should have been released, and I believe it is the right version to see, it is the version you've never seen, and I, I recommend both fully. You're adding an extra 10 to 12 minutes for the version you've never seen, so not a great deal, but it does make a huge contextual difference. 
Well, I'll go with the director's cut just on the basis that you're saying it improves it. I know what you mean about having an original. There's, there's plenty of versions of other films like Blade Runner that where both cuts have their own kind of place. So it's difficult yes. to know which one. It's not like one is definitively just better. The other one's a lesser film. Um, yeah. But given that I don't really watch a film twice in close succession, um, for this purpose, I'll go for, since I have to pick one of the two, I'll go with the, the extended one. I don't know if that's on the Blu-ray, so I'll have to look into it, because when I looked into it briefly, from what I understand, the director's cut, the version you've never seen, came out for the 25th anniversary, so that would have been 98 when it was on DVD. That would have been an early DVD, that as well, in the technology. Um, I think that might be the version I've seen. The one I've seen, it, it definitely opens in Iraq, because I remember that bit being just kind of creepy. It wasn't I didn't expect a film like that to have like a grand opening like that. They um, both they both open in Iraq, but it is yeah. yeah, definitely the version you've never seen, whether you have to get it on Blu-ray or whether I know you're not the biggest streaming fan, but it is for the purpose of this, I would definitely say go with that. And I would also say after seeing that, watch Exorcist Three at some point because you'll see what I mean yeah. about the the movie scene. It really for me, Exorcist Three is a very much maligned film. That's, yeah. that's to me it's every bit as good as the first one uh, right in context for me they they are the two they, they stand head and shoulders above the one and three number two can yeah. go take a drop kick I could, I could i could happily ignore number two i've heard the latest one and we can maybe talk about this in the follow-up video that we're going to do but the latest one apparently is dogger uh rubbish as well and it's even gone like into the sort of well as you would expect the work thing because the mother of Reagan, no, it's no, it's one of the sisters. I think that was it. Says, um, as in a nun or whatever she was. I don't know. Bear in mind, you haven't seen these films. Uh, says something about she wasn't allowed in the room when the exorcism was happening because she wasn't part of the damn patriarchy, and forgetting the fact that the people that actually were died in the process. <laughs> That's why she wasn't allowed in. But from what I've seen anyway so oh, yeah check that out Mr H Reviews has done some good coverage of that. So that's where I'm getting this from because he played the clip and he talked about it that's just how I know what I know I mean I so, do yeah. love The Exorcist from the point of view I think it's me I was brought up in the Catholic faith so I I have a real so, uh, I have a real interest in it because you wouldn't talk about exorcisms in the, <laughs> when you're at school it was a it was a if, it would a subject non grata, persona non grata, you just wouldn't go near it. If you were heard to be talking about it, you would be sent out of lessons. So there was always yeah. a deep fascination about it for me. It's like, why are they trying to hide this from us and keep yeah, it well, from us? Yeah, I went to a church school as a kid and I remember a lot of the religious stuff. If we were talking about a film like The Witches, I remember some two kids getting a real bollocking, not for talking in class, not for talking about movies when they should be in school, but for talking about The Witches because it was deemed as demonic. And the teacher, he was a pretty hardcore Christian, really had a go at them. Uh, similar to today with a lot of the work stuff. So if two kids were saying, you know, I believe that there's only two genders, some shit like that, I'd, the reign of hell, the wrath of hell would, would descend upon them. Um, same shit, different day, basically. But, um, well, I'll give it a watch then. Like I say, we don't need to cover too much in this video. And you've, you've given me some good information there that I didn't know before we started recording it. So it gives me a place to start. I'll give the film a Brilliant. watch and then we'll come back for part two, which... I know we're recording this separately, but when it goes up, it will be the next video. So to anyone watching this, the next video tomorrow night um, will be the follow-up where I've watched the film and then we can have a proper chat. Yeah, we can't, I can't wait for that. I'd be interested to see what you actually think of it because it is one of my favourite horror films. I remember trying to track it down as a kid because it, it was on the band list and yeah. out of them all, it was The Exorcist that really appealed to me. Or, I suppose, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre did, because you want to watch yeah. it with the eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, of they try to make that film so it had a PG certificate. Now, watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre with that information, and you'll see why they were... And you look at it and you'll go, actually, I can see why they were pushing for that. You know, because you don't... See, yeah. you, you look at it now thinking about that, and it's like... Do you know it was never going to happen, but you can clearly see what they were thinking. 
Well, there's a scene in The Exorcist, didn't there, where she says something like, uh, the Topher jerks the core in hell or something? Indeed, yep. There's some really good scenes on that. There's some... Uh, there's scenes where you almost... What's the, there, is a, there is a terminology for it. I can't quite remember. But you almost... It's happened. The image is happening, but you're not quite sure if you've seen it. And subliminal, there's a couple of subliminal things going on in there. And when you see it, you're like, "Have I just seen that?" And yes, you have, and it was intentional. Yeah. Uh, but when I remember we watched it on a video, there were three of us to begin with, and I spotted it, and they were like, "You haven't seen anything." And then I went back and I stopped it right on it, and they were like, "Oh, that's really freaky." And it was really yeah. it was cleverly done. It was a cleverly done moment. Was that? That's the first time I realised that they put subliminal things in movies. Yeah, well, that'll be something good. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. I won't read into it. I'll watch the film first, then maybe read into it and see if I caught it or if there's anything I missed. Yes. Cool. Well, that might be my Friday night film sorted out then. Brilliant stuff, but I think you will see it because you're like me. You spot things in films. I don't think you'll have an issue spotting it, but. It's a little bit jarring at first because it's like, did I just see that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no worries. Cool, right, well, I'll stop recording. But yeah, to anyone watching this, all three of you, um, we'll be coming back tomorrow night and uh, we'll have a follow up conversation uh, when I've seen the film. So, yeah. All right, nice one. Brand Thanks for having us on, Joseph. Any time. <laughs>